Okay, so I've been uh, doing some uh, 3D printer stuff at the uh, local library. They're offering a free service, and uh, I saw this robot online, and uh, they do talk about how they build it. They go through it pretty quickly. I um, filmed, uh, this first section is going to be me filming actually putting all the parts together and all the pro issues I have, and I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing some redesigns. Maybe I'll post uh, redesigns of certain parts on uh, Thingiverse, because I had... So some of the parts were a little bit difficult to get together. Or, uh, uh, I think I'd like to change the, the way the battery goes in there and some other things. But anyway, this is the uh, uh, Easy Arduino uh, Spidey 12 DOF on uh, Thingiverse. And um, it runs on a Hui Duino, which I haven't seen before. I'm going to have to look up and get one of those. But I'm going to just talk about putting the servos and, and building up the mechanics of it in this video. So anyway, uh, Let's get started. Okay, so here's an interesting uh, spider robot uh, design that I found on Thingiverse, and I've been taking advantage of the uh, free 3D printing here in uh, Fairfax. And uh, I didn't specify what color the parts were because I just wanted something that functions. And so it looks like the parts came out in all sorts of different colors. And some of them came out in various states, like, I kind of like the way this one came out, but it looks like uh, this is a single color 3D printer, and so it has some um, uh, fill material to do overhangs, and uh, let's, let's have a comparison. See, here's some of the ones, uh, 3D printers actually run by different people, and some people have uh, varying uh, levels of uh, abilities to make the parts or choose how to have them printed out. For instance, uh, <coughs> see, I think these parts came out very nicely. They don't have any overhang material. I was able to build it without that. Or maybe maybe the people peeled it out. But uh, if you look at these here, you know, this, compared it to this part right here, where there's a lot of overhang material in there, and uh, it's going to be a lot of work to cut that out. I think this is overhang material also. It's got to be popped out. And, uh, <coughs> see, there's, there, here's a similar part. Let's, let's see if we can compare. Okay. <coughs> so these are exact parts because we need duplicates. And see how there's a lot of overhang material in all these spaces. And this one printed without overhang material in there also. So I think they print out better without the overhang. I'm going to have to spend a lot of time cutting that out. This looks pretty thick, even though it's supposed to be sparse. And uh, <coughs> the main parts of it came out okay. Here's the, uh, the body that holds the uh, Arduino. And there's, I guess, a plate on the bottom. Probably have to break this material away. And here's the top. And uh, I guess it fits together like that. It's got a little ridge in the front, so we can put our Arduino inside of there, and then it would build up something like um, you'd have these uh, side things for the legs there, and then you have uh, something to elevate the legs. Let's uh, pop out one of these parts, I guess, break them apart because it prints two per per uh, print, and. Ooh, okay. I guess just like the old day, when you buy a model, you have to take it apart. Same thing with this one. Looks like it's coming apart fairly nicely, though. Just kind of peel this base material off, and uh, hopefully we'll be left with a nice finished part. And here's this part would go like here for the elevation of the legs. Okay, zoom in a little bit on that guy. So I'm going to kind of rudimentally put this together. And then this would be the the uh, end of the legs. And that would go in here like so. And you'd have four of them. And uh, then the robot would be able to walk on four legs. And so we'll put servos in between of those. Uh, it'll require 12 servos. It should be a very interesting project. And uh, I specified a smaller Arduino. I forget the number of it. I'll have to look it up. 
but I might have to get one of those because I have mainly Arduino Unos and Megas and some fancy fast ones but here's the holder for the Arduino which goes inside of here somehow and let's straighten it and so I'll work on these parts and try to break out some of the film material and get them all set and then I'll <coughs> Maybe we'll try to put some servos into it and see how it works, it looks, at least. <coughs> okay, it looks like when I broke these parts apart, the film material in the middle of these circles came out as a single piece. And so, it looks like that might be just easy to twist out like that. Okay, the other one popped out. These outer ones are, don't extend quite as much, so I'll have to fiddle with that and try to break them apart. Okay, it looks like this film material is going to stick to the base down here, so it's going to come out pretty nicely as well. So I don't have to break that apart either. So, maybe it won't be as bad of a chore as I thought to clean this thing up. And of course, here's a razor blade knife. If you carefully, like this this one didn't, this film material didn't come away so well because I couldn't get the bottom under it. But I think if we cut this a little bit, we can easily pop the rest of this film material off. But you want to be careful when you're cutting it. You don't cut yourself or something on the part that you don't want to cut. These knives are very sharp. See, cut away the bottom. Now the film material came off nicely. So we have these nice overhangs here. And i got to figure out how to get this junk out of this little fillet infills. And, uh, Parts are looking pretty nice. Okay, some of this infill material here, you can kind of see there's material right there where you don't want it. And you can kind of press it down and it snaps, and then you can wiggle it. Or you can get a razor blade in over the top of it and try to break it free that way. That seems to be a pretty good way to get that out. It's not coming out too badly. Okay, these ones with the uh, little film material going through them, and like I said, some of them were not printed with film material, or these ones are kind of difficult, but it looks like if you get a razor blade, kind of cut it at the top and the bottom, that you can maybe get these things broken away. Maybe clean it out later. Looks like it's kind of broken away. There we go. So there, cleaned out the hole. And then uh, I'll have to worry about this film material in here. This looks like it might be extremely difficult, but I have to cut across the top and the bottom to get that out. Okay, for the side material, it looks like if you get a screwdriver in there, and be careful not to break the front of it, you can kind of pry under it and just kind of pry it out. So it looks like this film material is coming out fairly easily as well. Okay. Okay, some of these sharp parts have uh, sharp edges where they were attached to the bottom. So maybe if you get a file and file that, you can get some of this uh, sharp edges off. Especially like this one here. Might be a good idea. Clean up the parts a little bit. Okay, looks like we have all our parts here. All laid out. All the legs. So we can build our robot now. And we'll try to fit servos to it now. Uh, don't forget to break the base plate away from this material here. It seems to be breaking away pretty easily. Just kind of bending it and prying it away. Okay, it looks like uh, getting a screwdriver under there in between the uh, build plate and the part seems to help separate it. It's got sparse material in there. So I'm going to stick the screwdriver in and bend it around, pry it up. Okay, it looks like we finally got the base plate off of it. And here's what the part looks like with, without that on there. Place, four places for the servos here. 
Okay, so this robot requires 12 servos, and you can get these uh, servos, what is it, the uh, SG90s? Let's take a look at these. For a uh, pack of 10, for uh, less than $20, so they're less than $2 a piece. And uh, that's not too bad. We need 12 of them for the robot. close-up of that servo. And probably need some of these uh, connector things, some screws. Okay, so at first I didn't realize what these things were, but they're like bearings, and you need to stick these in before you put the servos in. They kind of fit in these holes here, facing down, and there's four of them for the body. And you need to actually print out an extra four, so I didn't realize that. I gotta print those out still. And so you put those in the servo slots before you put the servos in. And here we'll kind of flip this thing over so they'll stick out the bottom so you have something to mount the legs on so the legs will have a pivot point. Okay. Okay, so here's our servo. And the, we'll try to put this first servo in, and it's got wires coming out the bottom, and I, those wires kind of got to go through this slot down here in order for it to fit into place. And then uh, the servo will go down on top. You want to make sure to get the pivot point on the top right above where the bearing is going to be on the bottom so it can pivot around that point. Okay, let me try to get the wire in. Okay, so we got the wire in place, and there's some screw holes so we can screw the servo down and uh, try to get the bearing fitted in the hole properly. Okay. Okay, it looks like this, uh, this uh, bearing here is too thick to fit down inside to where it's supposed to. And it makes it sit up too high, so it makes it just about impossible to stick this uh, leg over the servo without bending it and possibly breaking it. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to shave this uh, this bearing thing down. See so if you look at the size of the square, it's only about that big. And the base plate that's printed on is much bigger. And so I'll have to shave that down so it'll fit down inside this little square recess in here. Okay, so it looks like they're all four of them are cut down now and they fit flush in there. They don't stick up above. So we'll try sticking the servos in and see if uh, we can get them in and fit, fitting so that uh, we can get the legs on. Okay, so now it looks like the servo sits a little bit lower in this uh, uh, recess designed for it. Let's see if we can uh, get the legs on over that. Okay, so we got it over the uh, uh, <coughs> bearing on the bottom, and there's a little slot up here to sl slide it over the top of the servo. A little cutout in the uh, plastic right here. I'll try to get that up over the top and uh, see if we can get this on. Okay, looks like I got it up over the top of the servo, and it is, it is tight. It's real tight. It seems like it's rubbing on these wires, too. <clears throat> Maybe I'll have to cut out some recess for these wires because that is really, really tight for it to move. Okay. Maybe have to whittle this thing down a little bit. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to try to use a file and uh, cut out a little notch in the front of each of these servo places for the wires to come through so they don't get wear down by the, the legs rub rubbing across them. And I'll do that with all four of these le uh, servos. And uh, hopefully we can get the wires coming out so they don't get broken by the legs moving. Okay, I notched out the front here so that the uh, wires don't interfere so much with this leg. 
but it's still very tight. You can see this is bending here, and it seems like uh, maybe this was made for a smaller servo size in here or something. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, maybe I'll try following this leg down. Also, you want to make sure that from the drawings, it looks like the servo here comes out the front. These are not the same. The left and right hand side, there's a difference. See, there's a left handedness to this. So this notch on the top goes toward the, always toward the center of the device because this is where uh, the wires come out and the servo is at the top because the other leg has got to bend up around here so it's got to clear up here. So there is a preferred direction and this is the right way it's supposed to go. And uh, I might just try filing on, on this part a little bit to get it down because it, it's uh, got a lot of friction here. It's, it's bending this leg and it's not really fitting in there very well. So let me work on that for a little bit. We'll see if we can improve this design here. Okay, here I got all four of the le le first segments of the legs on here. And uh, they are snugger than, than what I like. But uh, we will uh, we will have to do a redesign of this. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, these servos also come with um, some plastic parts to go on the top so you can actuate things, connector rods, whatever you want to call them, and some screws to screw the servos down and connect these uh, uh, nylon connector rods as well. So let's uh, try to hook the servos up and see how that goes. Okay, so here's our screw, our connector screw, and the servo is actually sitting up kind of high because I think this design is uh, a little out of whack, but it does seem to be able to make some threads into the plastic. Let's try to screw it down a little bit. Like I said, I, I would probably redesign several things on this. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll redesign it and post it someplace. Thingiverse, obviously. And let's uh, put our other screw over here. See that okay? I'll try to screw these guys in. See if we can get a good contact in there. Uh, screws and the servo sits up a little bit too high it's got a big gap in there so that would be something to redesign as well I can hopefully screw these screws in screw the servo down okay, okay. And then we have this uh, these nylon parts that come with our servos and they are to Looks like this one will fit right into there, hopefully, and over our servo to lock this leg into place. And uh, has like little teeth inside of there that, that grab onto the servo. And then there is a tiny little screw, and that can go right in the center of this guy. hold it in place and we'll screw that guy down with our screwdriver. I'm probably going to have to set this whole thing down to do that. There we go. And so that's how the leg is locked into place on top of the servo. And we'll do that for all the legs and uh, get them all set up. Okay. So now we have all the uh, servos in place and the plastic uh, uh, lever arms uh, attached to the servos and everything screwed down and we're ready to go to the next step. Okay, so we have these legs on and the next step is, is to try to put the servos on the next section of the legs. And we have these plastic bearing things that we printed out and I still need to print out four more and uh, they go down into the bottom below where the servo is and when I put them into the the body of this uh, spider 3D spider uh, guy I had to cut them down a little bit but looks like these will fit in there without being cut down so you don't have to worry about cutting these down 
and then we're going to put the servo in on top of that. And these ones have a little slot on the top so we can feed the uh, wires of the servo. Remember we want the servos near the top of the leg because the legs are going to, the next section is going to pivot upwards. So we can feed this out through the top like that and get our servo there in place. Okay. And we'll see if we can fit the next section of the leg on and screw these servos down. Okay. Okay, so there's that gap. And if I did a redesign, I would probably make this a little bit taller here. Get rid of that gap so the servo would fit more snugly. Okay, so now we got the uh, screws into the servo on either side here. And uh, next thing we'll do is try to fit the leg on and put the uh, connecting rod on top of the servo and see how that fits. Okay, here's our other part of the leg, and it seems to be kind of symmetric. Um, I guess maybe we want to keep this notch on the top, I'm not sure. We'll keep it in the back because it looks like the wires run in the back. So we'll try to be consistent because we hate to have to tear this thing back apart. Remember the back, you want to get it over that bearing, and then there's like a little notch on one of these sides, so it's easier, a little bit easier to slip it over the top of the servo. Actually, that one didn't fit too badly. It's not as tight as the other ones. Okay. And it's kind of neat, they have a little pocket here to capture um, these nylon connecting rod things. So you kind of got to slide it into that pocket and then fit it down over the teeth of the servo. Okay. And then the last thing is we're going to put a little screw in the middle of that. Okay. Got a little screw there in the middle. Let's screw it down a little bit. I find my jeweler screwdriver today, so I'm using this bigger one, but maybe when I find them I'll be able to tighten it up a little bit more. And there's what the next section of the leg looks like. And we'll do that for the rest of the legs around here. And we'll get the robot going. Okay, here we got all the legs, the second middle sections of the legs on now, and it's starting to look like a spider just with all the wires coming out of it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at that. Okay. And uh, the next step will be to put the uh, outer legs on, but I need to wait till I get more bearings printed up. Okay. Okay, so here's our last piece with the uh, bearings printed out, and I probably have to break this away. Uh, actually, these look like probably the ones that go on the body, so I didn't need to probably cut down the other ones, but hopefully these will work in the other place of the other other uh, bearings on the legs. We'll try them out. I may have to cut these off because it's pretty pretty stiff material. Let's get these off, and then we'll try assembling the rest of the of our uh, spider robot. So we have this build material in the back and uh, I think it's making it too thick and so I was using some different wire strippers and screwdrivers and maybe I'll have to file it down or something. Try to scratch the back of this build material off so I can get it thinner and fit into our legs. Okay. Okay, so here's one of our legs and we'll just try taking the, one of these bearings here and fitting it into the hole. Okay. And it seems like it doesn't really fit in there so well. Maybe it's because it's the wrong one. We'll see. Let me fiddle with that. So, bearing should go in the hole like that, and it should seat properly, and it's not seating. Okay. Okay, I just cleaned it out a little bit with the X-Acto knife, and kind of wiggled it and pushed it in, and it looks like the bearing's in place now. So, uh, maybe we'll try to put our servo in, and see if we can attach the rest of the legs. Okay. Okay, so we got another servo here. Yeah, we're going to feed the wire through this 
so it comes out that little relief up there and uh, we got our bearing in place down at the bottom and so I believe it goes like this right so the servo top should be right in line with the bearing because it's going to pivot around this point and so the servo should be kind of toward the top of the leg like that and then we'll try putting some screws in here to hold this in place and try to attach it to the rest of the robot. Okay. Okay, so I found my jeweler screwdriver and I'll get these screws screwed into here, like so. And uh, I'll try to fit it into one of the legs in this guy down here. Okay. Okay, we'll put it, keep the colors the same. And so it looks like the bearing goes to the back side back here because the servo's got to grab onto this part right here. And so we'll get the bearing in there. And there's a little cutout here so we can slide the top of the servo up into there. Oh, these things are always such a pain. second. Okay, so there we have our leg into, or the uh, end of our leg into the middle section of the leg, and we need to put one of these nylon things over top of that so we can, uh, so we can get the servo attached to that. And who knows, I may have to adjust where these are later, hopefully. Those are in the middle of the range. Okay, and so here's our little nylon piece, and like I said before, it's got like a little slot that you got to slide it down into, make sure you get it the right way. Slide it down into there, push it in, and then you can push it down over top of the servo. Make sure that slot is cleared out because it's got to go inside of there before it can go down into the recess here. Okay. It's just got to go down there before it can go into the recess in there. Okay. okay, so we finally got it popped into place. So it slides in that way, and then you got to push it down inside that hole there. So it goes inside, and then we will put our last screw into the center of that guy. And I might need three hands to do this. Okay. Anyway, the screw goes right in the center of that guy, and we'll try to get him screwed in there. Okay, so we got the screw in. I'll just tighten her up. And then we'll go ahead and uh, put the legs, the rest of the legs on this guy, and we'll see how it looks when we get done. Okay, okay so here's the finished mechanical part of it. And uh, next thing we'll have to do is work on the electrical part. So anyway, you have to ask yourselves, do you have your robots ready to fight the evil new world order yet? Because it's coming for you. And here we go. It's time to fight back. Rawr. So um, anyway, I think, uh, seriously, might do some modifications to this guy. I um, know the original design had a, uh, what is it, 10068, 18060, whatever, lithium batteries. And uh, it'll fit inside a, the bo uh, bottom compartment here if you uh, just uh, weld or solder the uh, wires right to the battery. But I actually found these uh, nifty battery holders for those those type of batteries, big lithium batteries, and it just won't fit in there. So I'm going to do a redesign so that I can fit this battery holder inside of there. And some of these other things are a little bit tight as well. 
So we will see. Anyway, so this is the first step, the uh, mechanical portion of the uh, uh, Arduino Spider Robot. And this is Dr. James, and thanks for watching. The next part will be the electronics.